Hey guys, Ollie here from the Roland DG UK Academy and here's five tips to help you with VersaWorks 6. Tip one, update in VersaWorks. Keeping VersaWorks up to date ensures that you have the latest features and bug fixes. In order to update VersaWorks, firstly navigate up to edit and then drop down to preferences in here. Once we're in the preferences tab, the one that we need is this one, Roland at net. If I click on here, this is how it will look as default. So this whole area down the bottom is grayed out. In order to check for updates automatically and then notify you when an update's ready, we'll firstly check this box here. The great thing about this feature means that because it asks you before you go to upgrade, it ensures that if you've got a busy day lined up and you actually would prefer to upgrade the next day, for example, it will come back and ask you again when you're ready. Within here, we can then set the default site that we use for launching our updates, and we'll keep that as, as default. And in here, we can also select the frequency as well. It depends on what works for you, but typically we recommend either weekly or monthly to ensure that it helps you and doesn't hinder you by getting in the way of your workflow by asking too regularly. You have some further options down at the bottom here, which allow you to fine tune the updates. And just a final quick pointer on this is that the updater within the preferences won't update you from one version to another. So if you're on VersaWorks Jewel at the moment, you can't launch into VersaWorks 6 from here. That has to be a separate download. This is for iterative versions. Tip two, adjusting memory allocation. One of the really positive changes amongst many within VersaWorks 6 is that it can now use more of your computer's RAM, which is its working memory. To allocate more RAM to VersaWorks, firstly navigate to Edit, and then drop down to Preferences. And then within the General tab here, down at the bottom, we have Adjust the amount of memory used in the RIP. 1024 megabytes, which is the equivalent to a gigabyte, is the lowest amount that it can use. But if your computer's more powerful, you can actually ramp this up to three gigabytes. This will make the application more stable, particularly when working with large jobs or working with lots of copies of jobs. Tip three, saving jobs from VersaWorks. Saving jobs out of VersaWorks can help you with archiving customer files. It can also help you as well in terms of reducing down the number of jobs that you have in your queue. In order to save a job out of VersaWorks, firstly select the job that you wish to save and then navigate down towards the bottom here and we have the save function. This is also available by right clicking in here as well. So drop down to save and then within here you'll notice that we have a few different options. So either we have the VersaWorks job file, VersaWorks job plus source file or a PRT file option available. The difference between these, the VersaWorks job file will save your settings for your particular job. So if you've used high quality and a particular profile, for example, it will save that as a bundle of information. It will then look for the artwork itself in its original save location. So if it was saved on your desktop, for example, it will look for that as a reference point. So this particular method is great if you're quite organized and once you've saved your artwork, you don't tend to move it around. The second method that you've got is the job plus source file. When you select this option, it kind of welds the two together. So you have your artwork and your settings in one file, which can then be brought back into VersaWorks. It's slightly bigger in terms of its file size, but it means that you won't have the separation between artwork and settings that can occur with the previous option. The final option that you have is to save as a PRT file. Now what this does is saves all of the information once a job has been ripped. This can be great, for example, if you had a fleet of vans to wrap and you printed the first one and you want to keep all of the consequent jobs exactly the same, but you don't want to have to go through the re-ripping times that would usually take place. In order to save as a PRT file, you just drop down to the PRT file at the bottom here as an option. It will be, again be a larger file because of the rip information. Once you've clicked save, you can then bring the job in up through here under printer and send native file and send it directly to your printer. Tip four, using hot folders to bring jobs in. Using hot folders can be a quick and easy way to get your jobs into VersaWorks and you can set up a hot folder for each of your five queues in VersaWorks 6. To set up a hot folder, firstly click on QA on this little cog here, which opens up the queue settings and then drop down here to this little clock like icon. This here is then gives you an overview of an input folder firstly. So this is where your hot folder would exist. So in here we could select any folder or we could create a new one. So if I just create one here called Ollie's hot folder, a little tip here is that you could name these based on material. For example, if your queue settings are linked up to a particular material and then we'll select that folder in here. 
Now, with a hot folder, as soon as artwork is saved into there, it will automatically be deleted at once it's imported into VersaWorks. So just keep that in mind. The other thing that you can do when working with hot folders is you can select actions for both before printing and afterwards. So action for incoming jobs in here, you can either choose to do nothing, which is what you would ordinarily do. You can then, you could also set it to begin to rip and you could also set it to rip and then print if you wanted to do that. A great example of using rip and print would be if you had an online shop, for example, and you had your printer set up onto a take up unit, you could have it so your jobs were automatically imported and then printed afterwards. When you work with this particular setting, there are a few other settings down at the bottom here that allow you to set the interval at which you would start printing. And you can either do this by time or by paper length or by number of jobs. Also, just at the top here, you have your actions for after your job is printed and you can choose to save, delete the RIP data or delete the job. It's entirely up to you. Tip five, using the nozzle masking function on the LEF2 and VG2 series printers. If you're the owner of an LEF2 or VG2 series printer, there's a neat little function in VersaWorks that allows you to work with your print head, even if it's sustained damage. The way to work with this is to navigate up to printer and drop down to printer settings. And then in here, we've got an advanced button. And this is where you can use your nozzle masking. And you can see here that we can either use all of the nozzles within a print head, group one or group two. Now the question you might ask is how do you know which group is which? The way that you would work with this function is when you do a test print, you can see group one and group two indicated on there. And if you were missing nozzles from group one, for example, then you select group two from this drop down. It's as simple as that. This is a great intervention when you're waiting for an engineer to come out, for example, but need to get some important jobs out the door still.